Did you know that bass change their diet in muddy water? Recent research studies, both in the lab and on Three Lakes in Oklahoma, show that bass do surprising things, including switching what they eat. In this video, I'll summarize what the research says. Next, I'll discuss the different types of muddy water. Because a cove that's always muddy is a whole lot different than a clear one that turns to chocolate milk after a big rain. And finally, I'll offer some advice on how to fish in muddy water, because a lot of times it's your best option for catching a lot of big bass. So let's start off with the study, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. But it was published in the North American Journal of Fisheries Management, a peer-reviewed study done in Oklahoma. They took previous studies that had laboratory experiments on making water muddy and testing what the bass did. But these researchers, probably fishermen themselves, they wanted to know what do bass in the real world do? So on three lakes in Oklahoma, they actually tested and tested the stomach contents of actual bass that they electrofished. And what they found out, I think you'll find pretty interesting. So let's start off with the lab experiments. Basically, this is taking bass, you put them in, in aquariums, you make the water muddier, and then you test them to see what they do. A couple different things. The first thing they showed is when the, when the water turned muddier, the fish ate less. And the researchers kind of want to investigate this because sometimes, as you know, the muddy ends of lakes, that's where tournaments are won. They're biting really well. Sometimes it seems like it kills the bite, depending on the place. Now, this is the part that I think is the most interesting. What the research showed, at least in the aquariums, was that in clear water, the bass tended to eat more crayfish, more crawdads. When the water was muddier, they switched more to shad and to bluegill. So the researchers did this as well. They captured fish from, from lakes, and then they put them in the aquarium. And their test, this has been done a number of times, and, and the study kind of outlines that. But the results, at least in aquarium, are pretty predictable. So to test this, like I said, they went out and electrofished the lakes. They wanted to get real bass and actually check their stomachs, see what were in there, and get real-world results. They did this over the course of a couple different years on three different lakes in Oklahoma, some that were normally clear, some that were normally muddy, so they got a little variety, and obviously you get rains and, and it can change from one week to the next. Now they did it in spring because more bass are shallow, they can electrofish, and the electrofishing, you shock up bass, you can really only do that in the shallows. So keep in mind that some of these fish that are open water, that chase shad, that roam and stuff, they're probably not as impacted. So keep in mind, again, this is a, a research study, it's kind of, it's only only applies to these shallow fish, but I think you can draw some pretty interesting observations. And truly, we're going to fish shallow for muddy water fish anyway, so I think this applies to us where we're normally fishing our spinnerbaits and jigs up in that muddy water. So here's what the stomach contents study showed when they shocked these fish. For starters, the amount that the fish ate, they ate the same amount. The number of fish that had empty stomachs was same in clear water and muddy water, unlike what it showed in the laboratory. Somehow these fish were figuring out a way to eat. Obviously, they're like us. If it's windy outside, if it's cold, if it's warm, it's raining, you know, I'm going to eat three times a day. The bass are kind of the same way. They have to eat to survive. They figure out a way. Now, what came across in the stomach contents pretty clearly, too, was when the water was clear on any of the lakes, the bass preferred to eat crawdads for whatever reason. I don't know if they could see them better or they just, that's the preferred thing because they, they need clear water. But when it turned clear, that was their preferred food source in all the lakes. They really wanted the crawdads and they were more selective. It's like that was the primary thing in their diet. Now in the muddy water areas, a couple of things happened. One, they switched away from crawdads. They still ate some, but they primarily ate bluegill, and shad, especially gizzard shad. Now the shad and the bluegill made up the majority of their diet, but here's the other thing. The amount of variety that they had in their stomachs, they had terrestrial bugs, other types of like shiners and stuff. They also found juvenile bass, like baby bass in their stomachs. Basically when the water turned muddy, the bulk of their diet were shad and bluegill, but they basically ate anything they could get their hands, or in this case, their mouth on. They weren't very selective. They found whatever they could get and they would eat it. So a quick synopsis there, I think that's pretty interesting. Obviously the clear water fish, they're more fussy and that's what we've always known. Those, those fish are more selective. You have to dial in the right color and more match the hatch a lot of times, have perfect presentations. In muddy water, once you get around them, it's a few basic baits that, that work. It's more about location than the actual bait. And those fish in muddy water, obviously they're still eating. It shows they don't eat less, they still have to eat and they'll eat about anything that comes by them. So for me as a bass fisherman, they can't see it as well. And if I get it by them, I feel like they're gonna eat it. I'm gonna worry less about my lure choice up there and worry about the location that I'm in. 
So you can already see where I'm leading with a few of my fishing tips and how to approach it when to fish muddy water. But let's talk about muddy water because sometimes it sucks. It's horrible. And you always hear that cold muddy water is no good. And some people just don't like muddy water and stuff. It, to me, it really depends. And there's four different kind of categories. There's blown out mud. There's places that are always muddy. There are places that are often muddy. And then there's places that are very rarely muddy. Let's dive into each of those. So the first one, blown out mud, that's, now let's run away from this one. I don't care what part of the lake you're in, what time of the year and stuff, unless it's at the very last 10 feet of a creek or something, they might get in it. But we're talking if the, the a whole cove or the most of a back of a big creek, we're talking 100 yards, maybe a half mile of this. If it's really cold, man, that makes it even worse, but it's gritty. You look in the water, you can't. your lure instantly disappears. I'm talking like an inch below the surface. It's mud, and here's the other thing. It looks gritty. You can almost see like sand and sediment, all that grit floating around in there. That's really new, fresh mud. Like I said, if, there, if there's a big rain and you're in a clear lake in the last 10 feet, there's a tiny little spot of mud, well, that's a magnet. But when it's a big area, and often, you know, I don't care if it's cold or, or warm, that blown out mud, that new fresh mud, that's bad, that's ick, get away from that. Now the next category is that always mud. And a lot of times this is gonna be on the upper ends of lakes where the, the main river feeding it first comes in or those biggest flattest creeks are, they have big feeder uh, ditches and creeks that, that send a lot of mud in from rain and they stay muddy almost year round. Those fish are used to muddy water. They, they don't get too messed up by it. They're gonna even bite in the winter time, you know, as it warms up in spring, it's probably better, but, but they're used to the mud. The ones that live up there, they're used to it. They don't get, unless it's that really blown out stuff, they're used to it all the time. Now, the next category is the often muddy. And on those ones, that's areas, it's, it's again, a back of a creek or some place that has a big stream flowing into it. And every time you get a big rain, it kind of muddies up, but then it, it clears pretty quickly and goes back to normally, it's more stained or clear. Those fish, it's somehow they sense it. When that water starts coming in, it's like they know that it's going to turn muddy and they kind of shut down. A lot of times the bite goes away if it's that cold uh, winter, early spring type runoff, same with the fall. And I've always found there's like a bite window. When that rain's coming and the water's first coming up, before that mud gets there, it's like they sense it, they know it. And right before that turns muddy, to me, that, that gets really good. Whereas the always muddy area, that's more of just a consistent. If it rains and stuff, I'm not too worried about it. That to me is just always muddy. Those fish don't care. That often muddy, the one that turns muddy, let's time getting there right when the rains are happening before the mud gets in there and get that feeding window before that mud line kind of blows it out and it makes it eh, kind of tough for a few days. Now, the last category to me is the really clear water, the lower sections of the lake, the main lake, uh, the very mouse of big creeks. If you have a mile long creek, a lot of times when it rains a lot, the back will get muddy the last quarter of a mile, half mile, but that mouth rarely does. Now in those lakes, like these Ozark lakes, uh, some of these, the mountains of Alabama and stuff, when you get tons and tons of spring rains, we're talking those nine inch flooding rains, or you get like three weeks, it is nonstop flood conditions, everything's swollen and running in there. When that clear water, those clear water fish once a year, once every three years, once every five years get muddy water, it's kind of crazy. And a lot of times it'll get drawn down the lake. When it's flooding like that, you have to open the floodgates and you start pulling current. Instead of being on the upper end of the lake, it's going to draw it down the lake. So the mud will kind of move. Those fish aren't used to muddy water. And it's like a bonanza. They go to the bank, they get shallow, and they feed like crazy. It's, it's this it's a window, and as long as it lasts, it is so good. And especially when it first happens, it's like they don't they don't hunker down. It's not that gritty mud there. It's just muddy water, brown water, and those fish bite. So if your lake is normally clear in those sections, and it turns muddy, and it's one of these rare events that you've never seen it like that before, you better get to the bank, and <laughs> those fish are going to be biting. If they get aggressive. They get up shallower. All of a sudden, they just those ones that are so finicky, and you have to use six pound test and throw a shaky head out there, real long cast, and they you know they only bite on a few days. And when it's low light, these fish get aggressive. It's a fun time. It's like a feeding bonanza for them. So let's get into a few fishing tips and when you should fish mud and what you should do and what you should look for. Like I said, those two windows, the the places that are you know often muddy right before it turns muddy, let's hit those. A clear water sections, that's obviously a bonanza. But day in day out. When do I want to fish mud? To me, 
Clearwater fish, they bite best on windy, overcast, rainy type days. The nastier the day, they bet, the better they bite. You don't want high vis. If it's sunny and slick calm, those fish get, they can see six pound test line and your, all the flu, flaws in your lure from a mile away. Uh, I'm gonna fish those lower end sections of the lake, clearer lakes, uh, those, you know, pick out a lake that's, that's clear or the section of a lake that's clear, I should say. I'm gonna fish those on days, again, windy, overcast, rainy, if it's all three of those, even better. I, instead of having to throw like a little shaky head, a finesse jig, something like that, you know, a tube or a drop shot, that's when I can throw jerk baits and crank baits, work them fast, and those fish will chase. They're gonna be up on the move, uh, they'll come up from top waters and stuff. That's a feeding window for them. Guess what though? So much of the time, it's sunny and slick. Those clear water fish, Unless you're sight fishing and they're on a bed, I mean, it, that is the toughest time. And and when is this? Like sunny and slick is always post-frontal, right? The cold front comes through, the north wind blows 20 miles an hour, it gets cold. Those fish down the clear water, when it's if the rain's coming through and the wind's blowing, they bite for a little bit. Then all of a sudden it gets cold and it gets sunny slick, they're done, it's over. Guess what? Muddy water, especially in the spring, that muddy water, it's darker, it heats up fast. So a sunny slick area on the south end, it's dead. In the morning, probably up on that on that upper end, those muddy areas, guess what? Probably slow there too, but that sun beats down, that muddy water warms up. In the back of those pockets, in those muddy areas, that's where the water temp might be 5, 10, 15 degrees warmer up there than the lower sections of the lake. It's shallower and darker, it heats up faster. Those fish are gonna be earlier ones to spawn. They're gonna be more active. To them, they're not. you're not worried about spooking them. The, the other thing about mud is it puts them closer to targets, usually, and it puts them also shallower. So instead of having to look out way off the bank, I can concentrate on shallow cover, stuff that's up by the bank or in shallow water on flats. So I'm looking for lay down logs, flooded buckbrush, you know, spring rains if the water comes up, so flooded willows, any bank grass, you know, it floods a yard or pasture, just any sort of grass and vines, uh, reeds, you name it boat docks, uh, anything in the water, rocks, something like that, they're gonna be next to something and they're gonna be pretty close to the bank. So that makes it easy. If they're there, remember, like the study said, they're not that selective. It's basic choices. You know, bladed jigs like your slobber knockers and chatter baits, uh, square bill crank baits around the, the shallows, the anytime, you know, spinner baits, uh, and then Texas rig and jig, if it's lay downs and docks and bushes and stuff, put it right in there and slow work it. Colors, you know, it, they're not selective, so we don't have to worry about mashing the hatch. I want something bright. Uh, moving baits, a lot of times the chartreuse and the, the oranges, the reds, the bright stuff. And then black, black, blue, those those basic black neon, black with, you know, the red flake in it. That's Those are kind of my go-tos for any of the Texas rigs and jigs. Keep it simple. If you're not finding fish, you probably need to move to another area. One creek might be too blown out mud. It might not be warm enough. But a lot of times when it's sunny and slick and the, the people on the lower end are really struggling to get a bite, you go into a cove and you can fish it at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Might not be that good. The sun beats down all afternoon. Guess what? Those fish are up there and every lay down you come to, every dock post you come to, there's a fish on it. So that's when you want to go check out the mud. And uh, I think it's going to work out a lot better than that clear water. And the final thing on location too, if it's in the spring and, and typically... Anytime we're doing this, I'm not just going down on steep banks and stuff, typically in that muddy water. What I'm looking for is more shallow spawning areas. So in a big, if it's a big creek, I'm going to go all the way to the back where it goes from steeper and deeper to kind of flattening out. That's where it starts to turn muddy. And that's where you're going to find uh, a lot of fish, that, the resident ones. There's just cover there all the time. I'm going to look for coves, again, that have the bushes, the docks, the laydowns, a lot of cover in it. If it's all seawalls and kind of man-made shoreline, a real blah shoreline where the water's down and there's just nothing in the water, that's not near as appealing. If I find ones that have a lot of wood cover, a lot of grass cover and, and weeds, lay downs, bushes, that's where you want to be. If it's, you know, really cold, they'll be on the last little steep areas going in there, real tight to the bank. You can crank them and stuff or throw a jig down that. But again, they're going to be around that wood cover, usually a lay down or something there. But look for those big coves with a lot of flat water. The more cover, the better. And if it's if it's not in one pocket, like I said, go to another one, run it, and you can see the mud line a lot of times. Check the, the mud 
Some places, you know, it's just a matter of checking your lure. To me, mud is anytime, if you can see your lure about six inches or less in the water, you know, that deep or you know this deep, something like that, to me, that's muddy water, stained, you know, 12 inches, maybe 18 inches, something like that. But that mud, we're talking six inches of visibility. I want bright, sunny. I want the backs of creeks when it's warming and those fish are moving to the bank. Hope that helps, guys.